Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Coming to you from Washington's premier indoor shooting facility. Of course, that's Security Gun Club right here in Woodenville, Washington. Hey, we're going to talk about failed policies and scapegoating today. Well, we oftentimes talk about that, but today we're going to talk directly about it because it seems that, and especially in a lot of uh, inner city areas where we have a massive increase in property crime and car thefts, part and due, of course, to the defunding of the police departments. No, instead what we do is we scapegoat the automobile manufacturer and we say, you know what, you're just making your cars too easy to steal. And now we've begun to see that same insanity spill over into product liability as it relates to the firearms industry. Case in point, the absolutely absurd lawsuit filed against the Glock handgun company by the city of Chicago. For what reason? Well, because too many people were using Glocks for unlawful purposes you know, altering the design of an otherwise lawful firearm at the day it's sold, and that's Glock's problem, okay? And what it really is, is it's a way to scapegoat for all of these policies, which candidly have created this problem, passing all of these gun laws, which of course don't solve the problems because, well, candidly, they're never designed to solve the problems anyways. But today, we need to talk about a very alarming a trend because there's a letter out here, and I think it's setting up for something a lot worse than many people may realize. So today, Let's talk about how they will try to sue Glock into oblivion. Okay, what we are talking about today is a nasty little letter that the Attorney General of New Jersey, Matthew Platkin, has sent to the Glock Handgun Company, in particular their Chief Legal Counsel for United States Operations. We'll share with you what that letter says. And uh, unfortunately, it is signed by many, many other attorneys general from around the nation. For the hometown crowd here in Washington State, oh yeah, Bob Ferguson, he absolutely has signed this letter. You know, the one that wants to be our next governor. Now, for those of you who haven't geeked out on this video here yet, we'll go ahead and link it up down below so that you can, but this was about this crazy lawsuit that the city of Chicago has filed against Glock, basically saying, hey, you know what? There's these other people making these illegal devices that can turn your firearms into fully automatic weapons, and because they're doing all of this legal activity and producing these illegal items and then attaching them to the firearm illegally and then using the firearm for illegal purposes, yeah, it is your legal manufacturing of the firearm that's created creating this problem. I know it's absurd, but hey, when have the facts ever let gun grabbers get in the way of what they are trying to do? Well, as if that wasn't absurd enough, now the state of New Jersey, via their Attorney General Matthew Platkin and multiple other states are starting to pile it on. And I'm telling you, what you can see here is the beginning of what's gonna be a massive lawsuit against the Glock handgun company. So everybody better buckle up, because here we go. The letter, from Attorney General Platkin states in part, Dear Mr. Guevara, we write to express our deep concern about the allegations raised against Glock Inc. in City of Chicago v. Glock Inc. We hereby notify you of Glock's obligation under the laws of our respective states to preserve all documents related to those allegations for potential future production. Translation, when we have discovery demands filed upon you when we also join this lawsuit. The letter continues to then state, We have followed the mounting reports about devastation and public terror caused by Glock handguns that became illegal machine guns when fitted with cheap, ubiquitous inserts known as switches or auto sears. And then the letter goes through several instances in which these have been used in the commission of a crime. And one does not have to look too far. I'm sure the city of Chicago has almost daily examples of this occurring. Attorney General Platkin then also states, these unfolding horror stories exemplify the extraordinary danger of automatic weapons on our streets and demonstrate why they are so strictly prohibited. Worse yet, these are not isolated events or coincidences. Machine gun glocks and the switches to make them have been proliferating with increasing frequency. Okay, I want you to pay attention to what the Attorney General said because the manufacturing of these Glock switches are increasing at an alarming rate. Okay, let's just assume that in arguendo, okay? Is Glock making these switches? 
Is Glock handing out the design? Does Glock got some kind of a 3D printing center that I don't know about where you can teach people how to 3D print these things on the side? Is there a little nudge, nudge, wink, wink on their website about how to turn these otherwise legal firearms into illegal firearms? Has Glock actually made their fortune and their reputation by doing things illegally? Because all of that would be news to me. Now, obviously these things are increasing in use. And there is a problem both for community safety as well as for the safety of law enforcement officers, which we take very seriously here at Washington Gun Law. As the Attorney General states, what this means for law enforcement and the public is terrifying. Monitoring by ShotSpotter, Inc., a, a program I should point out that the city of Chicago is getting rid of, but I digress, alone detected approximately 5,600 incidents of automatic weapon fire in 2021, a 1,400% increase from 2019. I mean, are those were the product of Glock auto sears, Glock switches, whatever it may be. Well, we don't know. But again, don't let the facts get in the way of the point you're trying to make here. As ATF Director Stephen Dettelbach put it, always a reliable source, police officers are facing down fully automatic weapon fire in amounts that haven't existed in this country since the days of Al Capone and the Tommy gun. It's a huge problem. And then, of course, you know, taking everything that the city of Chicago said at face value, the attorney general then states, in light of these grievous public safety issues, we are disturbed to read the city of Chicago's recently filed allegations that you have known for decades that easy adaptation into machine gun is a natural feature of your handgun design and that it would have been easy and obvious for you to make different design choices to avoid this problem. Despite this, you have introduced your latest Gen 5 model versions, which are allegedly only minimal and functionally immaterial design changes, and you have continued to market and sell your legacy designs. All the while, you have increased production and sales overall, distributing an enormous quantity of handguns that you allegedly knew could readily be made to function as concealed machine guns. And I want you to pay very careful attention to that one right there, okay? Because not only is that gonna be a hook for all the attorney generals on this, but if the ATF wants to start weighing into this, if this turns out to be a full all out attack on the Glock Incorporated, this is the language that the feds and the ATF will use to try to justify any enforcement efforts there as well. The story that the complaint tells is of a company manufacturing and selling deadly weapons that were unreasonably dangerous in their design, in reckless disregard for public safety, choosing profits over reasonable design choices. Now, understand what the plaintiffs, if you accept everything they're saying in arguendo, is the Glock Handgun Company comes up with a design which clearly has worked for the Glock Handgun Company. I'm not endorsing the product, I'm not putting the product down, but clearly Glock has performed very well as a handgun manufacturer. Millions and millions of Americans lawfully own these and use them responsibly on a daily basis. They are incredibly reliable firearms. There is a reason that they have sold so many of them. What the plaintiffs are alleging here is, is, hey, listen, after these Glock switches were developed far into Glock's existence, you guys didn't go about and redesign your firearm, you know, take a design that clearly was working on the marketplace and redesign it, radically redesign it, so that illegal activity could not be associated with your firearm because we don't want to police the individuals that are actually importing the Glock switches or installing the Glock switches or using the Glock switches. No, 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 no. We want to go after the manufacturer. This would be akin in two instances, automobile manufacturers are making their cars too easy to steal or, or you want to make it even a little bit more like this. Automobile manufacturers have made cars that can be driven by drunks and drunks go out and kill people on the road, all of which happens to be true. The city of Chicago's lawsuit claims that your choices constitute violations of multiple sections of the Municipal Code of Chicago, including through the unreasonable sale and marketing of firearms and unfair business practices, the creation of, maintenance of, and contribution to an ongoing public nuisance and negligence. If the city's factual allegations are true, your conduct may also involve violation of our state's laws. Here we go. We will not hesitate to enforce our laws when they are violated. 
All right, and then what exactly are they asking for? Okay, and yes, they are teeing up lawsuits. Okay, so Glock, uh, you're gonna be employing a lot of lawyers. If you currently work in the legal department of Glock Inc., you are gonna be getting a lot of overtime hours here soon, okay? Because buckle up, here it comes. This is what all the attorneys general are asking for. In light of the foregoing, we hereby request that you preserve for future production all documents in your custody or control from January 1st, 1987 to present related to, one, the conversion of Glock semi-automatic handguns into automatic weapons through the use of switches or similar modifications, including but not limited to documents related to the prevalence, use in crime or violence, or public safety impact of such converted Glock semi-automatic handguns. Two, the design and development of Glock pistols with respect to their semi-automatic function, including but not limited to documents relating to their receptiveness to being made to function automatically, whether you took or considered action to reduce that receptiveness or the possibility of design changes or alternatives. Case in point, we'd like to get into all of your trade secrets, but wait, there's more. Three, your knowledge about all state and federal laws relating to Glock switches and converted Glock machine guns, your legal responsibility as a manufacturer of guns that could be converted using Glock switches and whether or not you complied with such laws and upheld such responsibility. And again, Glock is not being accused at the current time of manufacturing any firearm which is unlawful to sell in the United States. I am not aware of anyone who has ever purchased from a reputable FFL a Glock handgun, which on its design alone was unlawful. They want more though. That's not the end of it. They want even more, including four, financial information relating to Glock pistols, including profit, manufacturing cost, and distribution costs, as well as the cost of developing and or implementing any alternative design choices that were available or considered, and five, any public facing marketing or advertising related to Glock pistols, including any representations about their supposed safety, lethality, modularity, semi-automatic function, or the speed at which they fire. That letter again was drafted by New Jersey Attorney General Matthew Platkin, but I promised you that there were many, many more attorney generals who had gladly signed on to this letter. Who are they? Who are the other states that are likely gonna try to join in a big massive lawsuit against Glock? Well, they include Philip Weiser, Attorney General of Colorado, Kathleen Jennings, Delaware Attorney General, Joy Campbell, Attorney General of Massachusetts, William Tong, Attorney General of Connecticut, Brian L. Schwab, Attorney General of the District of Columbia, Dana Nassell, Attorney General of Michigan, Keith Ellison, Minnesota Attorney General, Ellen F. Rosenblum, Attorney General of Oregon, Michelle A. Henry, Attorney General of Pennsylvania, Peter Nerona, Attorney General for Rhode Island, Charity R. Clark, Vermont Attorney General, and of course, Bob Ferguson, Attorney General of Washington State. So I can assure you that this will ultimately end up being the first in a series of videos about this horrific lawsuit that Glock is likely to undergo in the next few months. All of these attorneys generals who are gonna gladly use this as political fodder, as a way to chum the waters for their base of support, some of which, by the way, right now are seeking higher office, they're gonna use this as just that kind of exploitive opportunity. Listen, we'll go ahead and we'll link up the letter below so that you you can read it for yourself if you guys got any other questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights. You should know how to get a hold of Washington Gun Law by now. If you don't, that's okay. That information is also down there in the description box. And then finally, let's everyone remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.